level possible some of you uh, may find that i'm going into too much uh, details uh, which might not be uh, something of your interest but hang on to that because i have to i have to set up my uh, course content for the lowest uh, possible i mean for, for the for the lowest uh, experienced person in in the group so that he will not or she will not be uh, lost in this 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 course so uh, do we all agree to this approach good bad yeah. ugly any feedback okay rule number 2 this is not a instructor driven class only and if this is this course is this whole career as a business analyst if you choose this as a career to go in as a business analyst then you have to change yourself as per the needs as per the demands of this career right which what i mean by that is it's not a technical job you cannot hide behind your screen all day and just go there finish your job and get out of there it's a, a it's a front end facing role so you will be dealing with business i would always tell my my students that this is 60 70% communication 30% other skills which include technical and otherwise so you have to improve your technical uh, communication skills you can survive with little technical skills in this role but you cannot survive without your communication a strong communication especially especially listening power you have to be a very good listener for this role and you have to be very clear with your communication whether written or verbal because you uh, this role demands someone who who can lead the whole project it's not a pm role but pm is only responsible for the for the funding side and day to day operations you are the single point of success or failure in a project because you are the only one working with the business side by side and you are uh, taking the uh, requirements from business and then you have to explain those requirements to the people uh, below i mean the, down the stream which are developers and technical people if you do not understand correctly what business has asked and if you could not explain correctly what uh, to 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 your downstream people uh, the project will fail so that's why i said it's a single point of success or failure could be a single point of success or failure uh, if the ba is is not up to the speed with his or her communication so when i ask uh, i encourage you guys to ask as many questions as possible uh, we'll do all the q and a at the end of the uh, end of this first demo session but i need your feedback and that's how i tweak my my next session and i that's how i understand where the where the level of class is so that i can either speed up or slow down if you do not understand something if you have any difficulty uh, i encourage you to talk in front of the whole class so that someone else who's who is already who's also struggling with that Uh, and maybe a little bit on the shyer side and not asking that question that will help that person too but uh, uh, you can reach me on on personal message or or email or what not uh, for those question but i highly recommend polish your communication skills everything else is easy just polish your communication skills i have some some tips some advices in between the course and after the course and so on and so forth to to bring you up uh, bring you up to the speed and uh, so that you will you will be a successful business analyst going forward so let's start with the with the introduction of the class i think i gave my introduction very brief uh, i've been doing working as a project manager right now but i have been in multiple role release manager reporting analyst qa business analyst mainly i started my career as a business analyst i did seven or eight years uh, as a business analyst and i've been teaching for last 5 6 years now uh, several domain i have worked in uh, telecom uh, insurance airlines a uh, little bit of medical and what not uh, currently 
I'm in a PM role, but I still uh, work as a BA capacity whenever I have uh, the opportunity to keep my skills sharpened. Uh, I am, uh, I, I think I have over 50 students right now trained so far. So I've been uh, teaching for a while, but every experience is different. So let's start with you guys, where you are from, what's your background, uh, what you are expecting to get out of this course, why you are taking this course, just three, four quick statements, and so that I can understand how, how my, uh, the mix of this class is. Okay, who's going to start with? Sufyan, can you start? I see you on the button. Hello, this is Safwan, and uh, my background is basically in, uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you go a little louder? Yeah, uh, I'm Safwan, and my background is is better now. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, that's much better. Go ahead. Yeah, my, my background is in engineering. I did mechanical engineering, and uh, after that, I have some training in QA performance, but not work ex experience. I don't have any work experience in US, but uh, have background in mechanical engineering, not in business analyst. And I have no idea about just uh, I saw your a uh, couple of uh, demos on YouTube. But I don't have any idea about business analyst and what they do. Like just basic idea, not much. So this is my background. Okay, that's good enough. You did your mechanical engineering here or from? No, no, in back, home? Uh, in back in um, Pakistan. In Pakistan. Okay. So how long? What are you doing here? You're working. You're uh, not working. Not not working right now. I'm not working right now. But uh, I did uh, some training in QA in performance testing and uh, l like I have experience with to load runner and performance center good good that will come handy some on some projects <laughs> okay who's next myself uh my, my name is sufyan and i'm from virginia right now i did my masters in information systems last month i graduated i'm done with my masters now and uh, congratulations thank you and about my previous education, I the, I too did my mechanical engineering from India, and uh, I passed my engineering in 2014 and came to US in 2015 and did my masters in information systems. And uh, I had an internship experience in India, Hyderabad. I worked with Mercedes Benz dealership as a graduate trainee engineer over there, and then. Uh, I worked with uh, BHEL, that's the Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited, that's a power generation, power, power generator plant. So they, they, I worked at these both places as an intern, but that was all related towards my mechanical uh, side. But now I switched my career towards IT, and now uh, as I have no experience in coding or any other uh, technical knowledge uh, so i switch myself to a <coughs> analyst as uh, this doesn't require a lot of technical skills and it requires just management skills and communication skills as you said just now welcome to the class of i think you will you will have a good time here sure since you already you already have some business exposure and uh, you will uh, with engineering background i think it will work better for, work, work pretty good for you I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Okay, well, uh, my name is Madhuri, and I'm coming from a background where I worked as HR for five years in NIT, and then I worked as a recruiter in IT. Then I have relocated to U.S. in 2015, January, and did my uh, master's in healthcare administration. So basically, I don't have a technical background. So I was looking... Uh, I was looking for full-time HR jobs, but uh, I could not get it. I mean, it was taking a lot of time. So I thought that business analyst is the right position for me because I have got management background. So I did my master's in management over here. So I thought this would be a good for me. And you said you have healthcare background, right? You're coming from healthcare uh, HR? Actually, in India, I did my MBA, and the major was human resource. And here, HR. yeah, it's, okay. it's MBA in healthcare administration and services. Awesome. So that's a that's a very uh, good mix because especially in in where you are located in Dallas or outside Dallas or 
Uh, right now I'm in uh, St. Louis. I used to live in Dallas, but uh, okay. recently I got married and I moved to St. Louis. With with the medical ba- background and HR background, I think you will find it very interesting. So welcome to the class. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Who's next? Hi guys, it's me, uh, Shariar. Uh, my last name is also Ahmed. Um, I am from Hyderabad, India. And uh, my background is in uh, airport management. I worked at Chicago O'Hare International Airport for 10 years. Um, supervisor, manager. Um, so I'm a non-IT background guy. So I'm interested in uh, BA. So this is going to be my first class. I have watched some videos online. So hopefully everything is going to work out for me. Welcome to the class area. I think... Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, you don't need much IT. You can pick up as much as you want as you progress in your in your career. But if you already are familiar with a domain, that's a plus. Right. Like if you are already familiar with the air, airline industry, then that's a very good plus for you. And right. you need since since you are familiar with the business, you already know the process and whatnot. So business analyst deals mainly uh, uh, under, main understanding is. So business analyst is to under, uh, main responsibility of a business analyst is to understand the business process. Once you understand the business process, you you get you get the requirements, you get to the depth of the, those requirements, and and that 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 helps you a lot. So those who have worked in in any domain, any domain, that's a plus because then you can relate how the process is process was in your previous industry and so on and so forth. So uh, good to have you here, uh, Sharia. We'll, we'll thank you. Hope you you'll like this class and you will learn something out of it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Who who next? Who's next? Okay, I'll go. Uh, this is Mushtaq, um, and I am from the insurance as well. I am an insurance agent right now, working in Carrollton, Texas. Uh, I have the insurance background uh, basically uh, for almost like uh, two decades, and wow. I am yeah I'm a U.S. citizen and uh, I've been working here as a property and casualty insurance agent. Oh, nice! I did a project in long time ago in property and casualty side. So okay. welcome to the welcome to the class, Mushtaq. I think uh, we have a lot of in this. Uh, do, uh, Specifically in Dallas, Texas market, we have a lot going on with insurance and healthcare. So you you will have a good time uh, get switching into into the business analyst side. I, I have, uh, by the way, I have healthcare insu- insurance license for 16 states. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, good. Including okay. California. There you go. Anybody else? Mr. Bambir Bajwa. Can Bambir somebody put Bajwa. themselves on mute? It's a lot of noise on the call. Okay. Mr. Bajwa, go ahead. Mr. Bajwa, you there? Anybody else there? Yeah, this is Sham Sanwar. Hello, Hello. Yes. yes, go ahead. I live in California right now. I have a telecommunication background, which is uh, work in RF engineering. Uh, okay. I start to work in a database in a, a Sprint company, but then I switched to RF, and I was working, and right now I'm jobless. So I got a talk with the Amit, and I think the last three weeks ago, three, four weeks, and then I started to join the class. So that's why I'm here. Okay, welcome to the class, sir. Uh, uh, once again, uh, good to have you here. And mm. uh, see, uh, so far what I'm listening is, majority of my class is non-technical. So that's a good thing. All of you are on the same level so far. Let's see who else is is there. But uh, that, that helps, uh, me to set up the class at a 
the whole content for the class at the same level and we all start from the very very basic so hang on there you will definitely find something who's next abdul could you abdul hey abdul um oh my god yeah go ahead go ahead okay hi guys uh, this is abdul i'm from southern california um my background is air conditioning and refrigeration i've done that uh, almost all my life so uh, i know how to deal with customers and people and uh you know all business analysis is, is to my knowledge knowledge so far is that um uh, find the you know uh, find out what the problem is come up with a solution and make uh, both of the party happy so you just have to empathize with that person and and feel what they're feeling and listen to them and you know um, i think most of it is like communication and rest will just come easy so that's what i'm that's why i got from a uh, business analyst but i've i've done air conditioning all my life so i've been i've done with customers and deadline and projects and pressure and all that so it's so no big deal to me i could you know uh awesome i could i could get it done you know in a timely fashion maybe even even you know faster than whatever i mean the next person to do as long as you teach me i'm willing to learn and i could you know feel learn pretty fast and i could you know do what i need to do great i like your motivation abdul i think that's the key um, welcome to the class will will uh, will definitely get you equipped with yeah. the skills and tools that you need to succeed as a business yeah. analyst so uh, one more thing i want to add cuz i was talking to amir about last week and i told him uh, all the questions are, are are in this world you don't have to go to the moon to get it so you know everything you find you can get over here so it's not that big of a deal you know exactly exactly true very true thank you abdul for joining the class uh, ahmed do we how many more people do we have you welcome shuja welcome shuja go ahead please hello uh, this is shuja uh, uh, my background is electrical engineering i did my masters in uh, electrical engineering from st mary's uh, san antonio texas my current location and uh, i've did my masters in december so i was like i'm like a fresher looking into get a job like business analyst welcome shuja to the so, class like uh, i'm i'm totally well. new to these subjects i don't have any idea about business analyst or any anything about that no problem you you will learn that but do you have any work experience at all or you have no work experience you straight coming out of the N- no i I don't have any work experience because I completed okay. my bachelor's degree in India Hyderabad and then I just got my visa like before like graduating and then I came here and I studied for 2 years in masters and I completed my masters so right now like I'm like totally fresh no problem no problem uh, anybody else um I think right. that's all Shabazz we have couple more okay good go ahead uh I'm doing my masters in electrical and electronics engineering from NPU University in Fremont, California. So I'll be graduating by this December, inshallah. Inshallah. Congratulations. So I don't have any much experience, but I have like 3 year recruiting experience. Nice. That will come handy for sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Who else there was some lady uh, trying to speak before um Chamal? Yes. Um this is Safa. Hello Safa. Can you give us a very brief descri- description of what your background is and what you're looking for in this course? Yes, uh I have a bachelor's in biological sciences from California, uh UCLA. And um a, a few years ago and then I only have experience like in student associations like you know volunteering experience like project lead, leading projects or organizing events so technically i have no exposure to business or something like that or any technical background but uh i decided to take this course just to pursue something new in career so i can move forward with the career awesome sounds good i think definitely your experience with with uh project uh, lead leading the project or project management will come handy you will learn you will find few few clues a few things that we we also do in, in technical world as well so it's not much different it's just same people we we have different kind of projects here so welcome okay. to the class thanks uh, go ahead that's all 
Anybody else? Yeah, that's all. That's pretty much it. Like, I've been technically, like, I have a like background in healthcare and biological sciences, so this will be a totally new experience for me, learning to be a business analyst. Sure. Welcome to the class. We'll, we'll Thank you. try to make it interesting for you as well. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. If that's all, anybody else after Asafa? Or that's the last person in the class? So pretty much the whole class is at the same level, uh, either with no experience, no technical background, or some but but uh, some experience but no technical background. So uh, we'll keep this class. Uh, we'll start this class with from very very basic uh, what the technical industry technical industry demands and whatnot, and we'll uh, we'll keep the class at the for the very basic uh, first few weeks once we establish the understanding for the entire class what exactly this industry is all about and so on and so forth then we'll we'll jump into uh, the more details uh, i first few classes there was no assignment but once we uh, go into class number 4 and 5 uh, we try to give an assignment on either wednesdays uh, i prefer to give assignment on wednesdays so that you have a weekend to to work on that assignment and sundays uh, either Sunday or the next following uh, Wednesday, you have to produce the assignment. One thing you uh, have I to have learn. Go ahead. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, so classes will be conducted daily at 8 p.m. or I mean I don't know the schedule. Okay, so I can tweak the schedule a little bit, but in the past I'm always uh, doing Wednesdays and Friday, uh, Wednesdays and Sundays. So Wednesday classes tend to be a little bit shorter. Sunday okay. class is a little bit longer. Uh, okay. I want to do no more than two days a week. And okay. sometimes there's a there's a holiday, there's some event, somebody's sick. I mean, I can get sick and whatever. So we'll do a makeup class for that week only. Uh, assignments, one basic principle. You have to make an attempt. I don't care whether you complete 100% or you complete 10%. In this course, you have to make an attempt. Okay, there is no A, B, or C grade. You have to make an attempt. If you don't make an attempt to the assignment, I will. That's the only way I can scale where you are, how much you picked up from the previous classes. If you do not make an attempt, then I will have no means to gauge you where you are standing. Uh, with and and that way you will lose the interest in the class and i will not be able to 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 catch uh, to give you an opportunity to catch up with the class if you don't understand the assignment even then try to make an attempt if you can there's no pass or fail i just want to see how much the course is helping you to make progress if you are not able to you miss the mark completely then i know that i have to redo that particular session and go into more lower level details so that you can grasp more. But if you do not test the assignment at all and show up for the next class when it's due, and then I have no means to gauge where are you standing, right? So it will help me and it will help you. It will build your confidence and it will help me set up the pace of the class. So we are all in ag agreement that we will make an attempt. I don't care how you do it. There are multiple tools to do the same assignment. And I will, I will give you multiple options. When I'm giving you an assignment, I'll give you examples. I will give you some of the industry, um, uh, some tasks from the industry. I'll give you some industry assignments. And uh, then you can do your own research. You can come up with your, you can tweak the assignment a little bit here and there. I don't care. You don't have to follow my instruction 100%. It's not, it's not a, technical class where you have to produce a certain type of coding, right? And a certain type of result. BA work is mo mostly behavioral skills, right? So those skills will come when you practice those skills. And there are multiple ways to resolve, solve that, that particular problem, that particular assignment. So don't be shy. Just brush up your, uh, uh, your, your communication skills Try to, to, if you have question, make sure you ask that question. No matter how dumb that question sounds, I can guarantee you it will, it will make you 
much more smarter when you ask that stupid question. If you don't ask that stupid question, that stupid thing will stay with you. So once you ask that, even if it's a very basic question, it will, first of all, give you the confidence how to ask a question. And that's what you're going to be doing in the industry. When you join as a BA for a new company, you don't know nothing about their business process, right? So you have to ask very fundamental, very basic questions. And you have to have that that is that courage to ask the question so that building that courage is important in this class right so going forward ask as many questions as possible and don't be shy about anything make an attempt whatever you can produce as a in your assignment that's acceptable just not showing up or <laughs> not doing it not even taking an attempt is not acceptable here okay let's move on to the course so basically what exactly is the role of a ba in your understanding Anybody wants to take a stab? Anybody? What I is a BA to, role? Yeah, I one here. Yeah, I think BA is like a bridge between the business people, the end client, and the development team or the testing team. Like it's a bridge uh, that defines that what's the demand of the or what's the demand of the client, what the our client wants, and he has to explain to the developers and the technical people. This is my very, very true. Very correct. So let me let me give you since most of the class is from non-technical background. Let me give you an example of a non from a non-technical background. Uh, anyone has experience to build a home or work with a subcontractor? Yeah, I do. This is Abdul. So, yes, Abdul. So, or if sounds like everybody in this class are from from India, Pakistan region. So we all had experience in, at some point of time to get a clothing stitch back home, right? Over here, you buy ready-made from the shelf, but back home, a lot of people go to the tailoring shop and get it custom made, right? Whether it's a suit, it's a, it's, it's shirt, pants, whatever. So basically the tailor, the master tailor that's sitting over there, what he does when you come, he takes the measurement of the piece of cloth you brought for him and then he takes your measurement and then he takes his notebook out and he asks you several questions, right? He asks you if you are getting a shirt stitch, he asks you full sleeves, half sleeves. He asks you how do you want, how many pockets, you want double pockets on the front or you want single pocket, how the collar should be, how big, what is your neck measurement, blah, 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 blah. Basically, he is a business analyst. What he's doing there, he is taking your requirements right and documenting them when you leave he will take the cloth piece of cloth give it to someone who is expert in cutting the cloth that person will cut the cloth as per your measurements right then he will pass it on to somebody who is an expert in stitching that piece of cloth and everywhere it goes every desk it moves your instructions goes along with that cloth right you, your measurement if the if your measurements are not accurate the first person who cut the cloth will cut the cloth either too short or too too big right then the next person <coughs> if you if your instructions or if your measurements and your instructions are not clear he will not be able to stitch the way you ask him to stitch right you ask no pockets on your shirt and he probably put one pocket because that's the that's the standard right and then you ask for Shevani collar, a short collar, a coat collar, and he did not document that correctly, then the person who is stitching will put the regular collar, right? And so on and so forth. Then the third person will do the, the finishing, adding buttons. You ask for a specific button, black color buttons, and this size and that size, and he, he did not document that correctly. He will put ordinary white buttons and too big of a button or whatnot. Now you come back to him after two, three, five days, whatever, and you will find the product completely different. Now your time is, is wasted. His time is wasted. Your, your material is wasted. And then you will be pretty mad at him because you, you, you wanted that specific garment for a specific day and it's not ready. Plus you lost all your material. He can refund you or whatever, the material but he cannot refund you the time right so basically that's what you will be doing in the IT industry 
you will be talking to a business what they want and you will document those requirements we call them requirements here right into a template that your company will provide you each company that you're going to work with they already have predefined templates for business requirement document called brd right then you document them so if you go back to the the example i gave you and if you took a picture with you of how the shirt should look like if somebody is wearing that specific shirt and you want that shirt to be like that what the tailor will do the head tailor will take that picture and attach to your measurements right that's what you do over here in the it industry as well. when you are doing your brd and the business tells you that this is how i want to this thing to look like you draw the picture either in a tool video or something we'll, we'll cover that in the next few classes or if the the system is already existing and he wants to make some changes into that system let's say their website has only they sell insurance right and they have only the english version of that insurance now they want to add a button to con- when you click that button the language will convert into spanish so you will have a spanish version and an english version of the their website and you can switch between the two that's the requirement so you can take the screenshot of the current existing website and draw a button using paint and any any other tool where the button should be and what the button should say and so on and so forth attach this screenshot in your document if you find more screenshots that they want to make changes to you can take those screenshots and add into your document so once you complete that document you pretty much know what exactly the business wants right we understand overall what the role of a ba so basically you guys are a tailor okay yes, going forward you will <laughs> so you will be tailoring the application rather than tailoring the suits or, or garments you will be tailoring the application understand any doubts any questions any comments Okay, no response. No. No. Good. So, what exactly a BA does? Basically, it's a as I said earlier, uh, it's a it could be a single point of success or a single point of failure. There is a lot of uh, burden on your shoulder because you are the primary person who is dealing the customer, who is talking to the customer. the rest of the team has no access to the customer in fact in this global day and age the people who are actually doing the work may not be in this country may not be in this continent they may be living in thousands and thousands of miles away the qa may be in india the development may be in india or brazil or pakistan or sri lanka or somewhere else so the only thing they know is the artifact the document that you are producing the measurements the the drawings that that you are putting together for them right so i can i mean in my opinion 60 to 70% of the failure is on your shoulder because you have if you do not document correctly if you do not listen to your customer correctly then you miss you will you will make a huge mistake and that mistake will cost may cost the entire project so business analyst serves as a liaison as a translator as a communication bridge between non technical project stakeholders and technical solution team technical solution team developers uh, qa and in within development there are so many other sub categories there are ui developers there are reporting developers there are back end developer there are infrastructure people they are architects there are so many other people in in the technical definite technical team and stakeholders are basically the business main is project snake stakeholders are the business so for example you are changing a solu- let's say AT&T wants to change their collection process how their collection of their bills should work so the the collection department becomes your main stakeholder within AT&T 
the collection department become your main stakeholder so you will be assigned to the collection department that project is created for by collection department they are funding the project and so on and so forth so within an IT environment there are two pieces a business and IT and you are somewhere in between anybody who everybody use technology right but they are not the owners of the technology so the if they have an applic collection has a collection application they don't own that application IT owns that application they own the process understand the collection process is owned by collection team they design their process how the process sh should be if you don't pay by this date it, you will get a nasty letter if you don't pay by this date you will get a reminder call if you don't pay by this date your off, uh, on, uh, outgoing call should be stopped if you don't pay by this date you will your incoming will stop and if you don't pay by this date you will get a disconnection you will put on disconnection notice if you don't pay by this time or if you pay at this point then you will have to pay the uh, reconnection fee and then your number will restore and so on and so forth right so the process is owned by business but the solution that the technology that makes that process work is owned by IT so there are two different understanding right you belong to you when it comes to your particular association you you are somewhere in between but you are considered a technical person from, from the business point of view but if you are talking about within your technical world you are the least technical people with the most burden on your shoulder any any comments here any confusion here are we good come on guys give me feedback yes we are good okay let's move forward so besides just the liaison and and uh, facilitator uh, liaison and the bridge between IT and, and uh, business you have to have some other skills that some other functions that that's on you you are a facilitator you are a moderator still listener you have to sharpen your tech your listening skills we uh, as a foreigner to this land most of us are from mm, other parts of the world right some are here 20 years some 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 are little newer to this land and whatnot so we speak English we learn how to speak English we learn how to write English but we never learn how to listen right listening is, is something which comes naturally and nobody pays attention to that it's okay when you when you are dealing in your own mother tongue but it's different when you are on a foreign land there and business use a lot of different language uh, a lot of jargons some industries have their own specific jargon so so listening you have to work on your listening skills right maybe your your business uh, stakeholder maybe the the person who's assigned to you to give requirements to you is a foreigner as well maybe from Australia maybe from England or whatnot they have a thick accent when they say something it's difficult for you to completely understand what they are trying to say right or he use a lot of uh, what you call phrases a lot of uh, references from his background which do not make sense to you over here right so you need to work on those skills that okay I don't understand what exactly do you mean by this right uh, I remember a long time ago when I started my career uh, somebody uh, I was asking requirements I was collecting requirements the business and he said it's a BAU and I was like what the hell is BAU and I wrote it down in my <laughs> notebook BAU and after coming back to my desk I was not sure it was a two three people sitting over there I was comfortable there back then enough to ask what exactly do you mean by BAU and I googled it and it turns out oh it's a business as usual which means I don't want anything to change here keep it the way it is right now right so you will experience a lot of uh, those those 
slang those jargon those tech, non technical uh, stuff and when you are dealing with technical side giving back work to them they will use their technical jargon they will use their technical language then you have to stop and ask what exactly you meant when you said this thing so that you don't agree anything that you don't understand so you have to work on your technical uh, listening skills again you have to lead a team so you may not have direct reporting to you under you but you will be telling giving work to the qas giving work to the bas giving work to the other people who are actually doing the work so you have to function as a team lead in some capacity as well other thing is visionary so let's say there is a requirement that business wants to do a certain way and you heard some other project coming along some other folks of your team within the technical team are doing something that may interfere with with this, these requirements or may make those requirements difficult or some some other scenarios where technical team is is practicing or going for a seminar or something for this many days and what not a freeze is coming up the technical team is planning that they want to maintain all the old application and do some work on them so they will not be working on any new development any new team any new stuff so as soon as you heard those things you know that this may cause a hindrance or may, may cause a trouble for your business right so you need to go back to business and tell them okay this is something coming up so it might cause a pain point for you or it might be a uh, cause trouble for your application or whatever the work you guys are planning to do this in this period of time so you have to have the long term vision as well as a uh, business analyst i think somebody told me when i was pretty young in my career that as a ba you should be able to see the woods in the in the trees and the trees in the woods so inside out and outside in picture you know you have to be that kind of a person and you develop that that those skills when you get uh, involved in more and more projects but so you should be able to see the small impact of a bigger change or a bigger impact of a small change let's put it that way your business giving you requirements to change and and you will face those kind of uh, situations where business wants everything and then you have to stop there and ask business what exactly you are trying to achieve by adding this 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 and business may may not even have an answer they will say uh, it just looks good or oh, okay i'll i'll have to rethink about it so that comes un- under troubleshooting like right before you i mean or they already have a solution already have an application but they don't even know how to use that application to the fullest extent and they want to buy another product or change that product so you go and you do your own analysis in the existing system and may come back to them and say okay the the requirements you gave me for the new system they are already in existence in your current system this is how you you get this thing done by this way you just never expose or never uh, made yourself familiar with what other options this current system is offering you and believe me you will come across this situation in your career uh, people just like uh, ordinary people in the in the in the, in the on the street these your business also wants every shiny thing whether they have a use for that or not when the iphone 10 come uh, will come out everybody who has a little bit of buying power will run after iphone 10 they will not be using 50% of the functions of iphone 10 but they want to have the iphone 10 and business is just like that as well many places they just want the next shiny thing whether they have a purpose or need for that or not so at that point of time as a ba you will have to take a stand okay you want this 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 functionality which is already existing in your current system or what is the business purpose of that so you you ne- <coughs> excuse me you negotiate the requirements if some sometime business will ask you very unrealistic timeline okay we need all this solution within this month or that month and what not then you go back to technical people and say okay this is what they are asking this much work can we do that and they say no this is not possible within this time frame this is this many 
hours of development and this many hours of testing and so on and so forth and then you go back and negotiate with business okay i can't give you all this by this timeline either you increase the time or decrease the scope right so it's a very hands on public relation role so all those people who have some exposure to some extent with working with public relations will will find it very very uh, interesting the the only difference is the 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 product is little bit technical what you are doing what you are providing after the uh, at the end of the uh, project is a non tangible mostly a, a software solution rather than a tangible product rather than a shirt or piece of uh, garment you are producing a piece of co- uh, development code a piece of solution uh, that's not tangible are we good here i think we got into a little more uh, depth so i'll skip a few slides if there is no questions uh, i'll jump into the fundamentals of business analysis is it good are we all on on same level right now anybody yes. lost okay so the objective um uh, the what we will cover in this fundamental uh, of business analysis is definition of business analyst what the profession explore the knowledge areas of a business analyst uh, definitions of requirements and its type what type of requirements and uh, what exactly a requirement is understand the difference between requirement elicitation and requirement gathering uh, gathering and there there's a the let me put it that way the when you start your career you you gather the requirements but when you get groomed and you get become a skilled uh, ba you elicit the requirements you negotiate the requirements you do not take everything what they throw at you you take what you can do you push back that's the difference between elicitation and gathering you do not pick up every piece of <laughs> stuff that that they throw at you so elicitation is more you are managing the work to some extent rather than the work they the business is managing you and your workload okay we'll 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 go in detail and we'll we'll do uh, a deeper discussion on that as well are we good at this point you clear with the objectives of business analyst so why a business analyst some in my previous classes some people asked me why do we need a business analyst why can't just business go straight to the development team and tell them tell the developer what they want and they can produce because you are not doing any work right you are not writing any code you are not getting your hands dirty you are just a messenger in the middle so in the beginning the business analyst up, up till 12 15 years back maybe a little bit more there was no specific role for business analyst development team talks to that business team on face to face and they tell them go do this and they go and do that and so on and so forth just like project management office there was no project management tech office pmo to manage and package the work into projects and then do the whole work in in a form of project there was lucy goosey stuff going on i mean you start okay i got money let's build this thing halfway through you run out of money or the end result comes out to be something else because nobody documented it nobody negotiated it nobody and uh, nobody uh, try to understand what exactly the work is and so on and so forth if, if all the projects were like uh, hit or miss a battlefield whoever has a louder voice will dictate okay i want this especially if you are from back home people still do a lot of work without documentation especially when you are building a house back home you will find a subcontractor he is a thekedar and what not and he will take a deposit and he will grab people from the street to start breaking things down and putting things together at the same at the same time and it was a common practice then before y2k and so on in it as well 
and by the way project management business analysis and all that these are not specific to it you have non it projects as well that they are they are run with the help of a project manager and all the uh, response uh, business analysts and so on and so forth so it's not specific to to only technical work business analysts and project management and what not now people do non technical work through uh, using those those uh, techniques and those tools that they develop for uh, business anal- analyst and uh, project management office so a lot of work at the beginning done but it was not always productive people are doing things without knowing the the full full length full breadth of it uh, and it projects were were also done that way then some time later organization invested in project management practices and they design the they broke down the they did a project life cycle so it's not specific to it it's specific i mean it's it applies to everywhere you plan the work once the planning is complete then you start the building of that work once the building is done then you do the testing of that that work and then you do the implementation of that work so if you have build a house in in this country or remodel your house or something in this country this this is the sim- same thing you plan you hire a subcontractor who will put down all the options and then you get a permit from the city then the license person will start building the work then the city will send their inspector to inspect the work if that work is as per to the code of the city right when once <coughs> if the if the inspector approve that work then that work is finalized but this thing is still missing a a a very important component so why it doesn't work only 16.2% of the projects will be completed on time and budget just a second guys i have a call coming so uh, about about 40 to 56% of the project con- conflict can be traced to requirement errors so there there you go half of the issues that project traces faced in the past were due to the requirement errors F- finding and fixing requirement error consumes 70 to 85% of the project rework cost 70 to 85% rework cost because of no the requirement messed up the average project exceeds its planned time schedule by 120% so you want to spend 100 bucks on something you end up spending 120 extra 
uh, about 52.7 percent of the project will cost 189 percent of their original estimate about 30 percent of the project are cancelled before completion because ran out of money too much rework too much uh, wrong uh, pro uh, development and so on and so forth so that was still uh, going on what happened So in the conclusion, typically project expends uh, least effort on requirement analysis, which is where most error originate and whose error, those error costs most to fix. If you make a mistake when your requirements are clear, that mistake is usually very small. But you know, if you're traveling in a, in a straight line and you deviate one degree or two degree from that straight line, you will end up very, very, very far from your end point. So that's what the requirements are all about, right? If you deviate a slight right and left from the correct, correct requirement, the end result could be very different from what, what you are looking for. And that's why projects doom, basically. So now the picture completes business analysis work is added the analysis part is added before the project management part that's where that dis they describe the work and define the work what that means is scope is defined here what exactly the work is and how it's going to be done high level it's discussed in business analysis role once that is solidified but once that is finalized then the planning and building and testing phase that the project man management phase is, is put in front of it. Earlier, there was very little attention on the scope of the work, the definition of the work and definition of the accept in, uh, acceptance of the work and so on and so forth. So, uh, what, go ahead. Uh, can you please give an example of each describe and define? Sure. So basically, the scope comes under describe what exactly you want and define is how you want it. So it could be, uh, I'll go back to that my first example that I gave the tailoring shop you, you go to, you describe them what exactly you want, right? You want a shirt or you want a pant or you want a suit or you want all three of them out of this piece of cloth. So you define the scope. Then he takes the, his measuring tape and measures and say, okay, you do not have enough to have a full sleeve shirt. It can only be a half sleeve shirt, right? So that's where you define, describe. And then comes the uh, definition part of it. What is acceptable by you? You want this size collar and this size, this and that. All this is put in, in front of the all planning. If you, the, the timeline, if the piece of cloth that you brought in is short, if the timeline is short, if it's, then you will stop it over here before you get into planning and all that, right? He will send you back. He will say, no, I can't deliver within two days. I have enough work sitting for me and blah, blah, blah. Or you don't have enough material to cover what you're asking for, right? That, that scenarios are covered here. So business, as a business analyst, that's what you, you go back here. That that's work comes here, right? Your facilitator, your moderator, your listener, your team leader, your visionary, your troubleshooter. So you, is, there are two options. If the piece of cloth he brought to you is short, right? You can either tell him, "Sorry, I can't make a shirt for you," or you can tell him, "I can't make a full sleeve shirt for you," right? You still get the customer. You still get the the uh, his money, and you still get some. You still produce something for him. It's not the full sleeves; it's the half sleeves, right? If you say no, I can't make a shirt for you, he will say, "Okay, I'm going." You you lose a sale, right? People who have yeah. some sales background, you understand me better here. That you are not lose. You are trying to hold on the customer, still trying trying to make a sale here, but you cannot give him what 
what you don't have, right? But you are giving him second option. I can't give you a full sleeve. There's a difference between saying I can't make make a shirt for you, and I can't make a full sleeve shirt for you. So that that's the that's the uh, part you basically do in describe and define. Got my point? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay, the, the plan, build, test, and implement. That is the project management work, right? Yes, yes. That I role is slide. PM. Yep. And this is, is BA. Okay, so only two uh, functions are for BA. Well, within these two, there are a, a lot more micro functions. But on a nutshell, on a higher, higher level, they are only yeah these two major steps, and they are. they can be overlap and combine into one major step as well it depends how how the project is how complicated the situation is and so on and so forth Because but high in level the beginning, in the beginning you said if i remember plan <laughs> build test and implement is also the bs role well you take part into every single step because when the build is going on you are you are monitoring as a ba because i will will cover that in detail when the testing is going on you also more there to uh, validate that testing as well right qa is doing the testing but you are validating that test when the build is going on you are taking a status you are looking into what's going on there the project manager is mainly oh, does more in most of the cases project manager does not even have actual inside of what what the requirement is what the work is he say he is just looking at his timeline and how the money is getting out of his his project a ba works hand in hand with pm and in if you uh, in 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 reality most of the bas become project manager later part of their career they learn so how to there can the, be so there can be a ba and a project manager in the same uh, business firm yes yes usually it's not uh, this practice is not appreciated because sometimes the workload goes up and down and you cannot justify two positions but a ba can very well manage a pm work after spending few years into the industry you is i mean, i myself drew like that and i have seen several others and it's a very good uh, i mean it it helps you a lot in in your project uh, management career as well if you are coming from ba background if you are coming from a technical background that helps a lot rather than just a pm uh, if you have additional skills with you 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 are more successful as a project manager i see okay um I, right now i'm dialing from my cell phone uh, i don't since i don't have my mic if you can enable the uh, chat i would really appreciate that sure uh, for that i have to open so chat is enabled i think you can write me something over here if you, can you see my screen mm uh-huh. there's a messenger option here and you can type me if you have any question but my mic i'm oh, sorry my um, mouse is not enabled your mouse is not enabled what exactly do you if need I, your mouse I, for i go okay can you see my mouse now no actually i'm sharing my screen so i am the presenter i have to make but, you uh, the I presenter can't, i can't i can't i can't uh, use my mouse what what do you need to use your mouse for what do you want, what what are what are you trying to do to put to put my questions instead of using my cell phone okay i don't think it, this version of uh, conference call works with the mobile devices if you are on a desktop i think you can type and you can do that i think this version of the conference that we have go to meeting or whatever this is it's it has an option to control from your cell phone okay i don't know if you dial in right. dial right. in with your lap machine i think that that's going to be easier but you can ask the questions over here i mean on the call i'll stop for the for your questions you yeah, know that's okay that's okay good thank you okay so, so i have a question here 
Sure, go ahead. Yeah, uh, what I get from you that if there is a business analyst, then there wouldn't be any project manager? No, 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 that's not true. Project manager's responsibility is different. His job is to get the project funding, kick off the project and initiate the project and monitor the funding, how the funding is going, secure the resources and so on and so forth. You are not responsible of securing the resources. You are not responsible of managing the financials of the project, how the money is getting spent and so on and so forth. So for you, uh, every project, there will be always a project manager and there will be always a business analyst. There will always be a BA and a PM if you are doing a project. If that sometimes non-technical project where the requirements are you're buying new servers or you're buying up something else, there is no requirement there. You are just buying a hardware, right? You don't need a BA in that project, but you need a project manager who works with the IT finance and the finance to secure to create a project, get the project approved, get the funding approved, then find somebody who can supply those specific servers and specific infrastructure that you're looking for and so on and so forth, and then get their invoices, get them approved and so on and so forth. You may not need a BA for that particular kind of project, but when you are developing and building a product, a solution, mm-hmm. then you need somebody who can ask the right questions, document all the specifications and so on and so forth. Just for the same example, I gave you the tailoring shop. If you are buying a ready-made shop, there will be nobody taking your measurements. There will be nobody documenting your needs. There will be nobody doing so. They will say, okay, these are the garments, these are the sizes, go pick one and try in the fitting room. And you, if you like it, take it. Otherwise, find something else, somewhere else, right? So that's yeah. a tailoring shop versus a ready-made shop. That's the difference uh, I can give you in this context where you are doing a technical product, where you are building something, and you're buying a full, fully developed product, a server, a machine, a equipment, a machinery or something, right? Okay. This is Abdul. Yes, Abdul, go ahead. Yeah, a project manager is basically the contractor and the business analysis is uh, like the electrician or the carpenter or the people who's doing the carpet and stuff like that. So that's why I got uh, it. No, actually, you know, actually, business analyst is, is uh, you can say, a subcontractor. So he right, yeah, so he is basically the point of contact who's taking the notes, who's taking your specifications and docu- making sure you want a two bedroom two bath in your existing home so he is right. he is the person who's running to the city, getting the permit he's subcontractor gets the permit, gets find out city approves it, not approves it, whatever, then he will right. venture out and look for a uh, uh, Electrician, look for a plumber, look for other person. But over here, it's subcontractor. But in a in a technical project, it's a PM who secure the resources, not the. Right. And if if you are doing a remodel through a proper construction company, you will have a project manager assigned, and then a right. subcontractor. So subcontractor, the BA project manager is the project manager who takes your check, who takes your money, who will pay to those vendors who are working. But the subcontract is responsible for finding those right people, finding the city codes, finding city inspectors, and so on and so forth. Okay. It is slightly overlapping the role of a BA, and if you are, if you go into the the multiple methodologies, how the projects are done, IT projects are done. One is very famous is waterfall, and the complete opposite of waterfall is uh, is agile which is very popular these days and will cover in detail at least, I think, two sessions on Agile. Uh, so you will see if you are doing a project in a Agile, it, the role, the line between the PM and, and the BA gets more blurrier. A PM and BA overlap each other a lot more. There's a third role in Agile world, which is not a new role. Either a BA can take that role or a PM can take that role. It's called a Scrum Master. And we'll we'll discuss it in more detail when we go further in, in our project in in, in our uh, class, and you will see the difference, right? Any other questions? Okay. So, as a BA, you will work with a lot of team members, a lot of people, 
uh, you work with system analysts, you work with system engineers, you work with architect, you work with program programmers, you work with PM, you work with business other junior analysts and so on and so forth. Not all roles will be in every single project. You may not have a system engineer. You may you the, the you are not building a brand new solution. You may not need a uh, architect there. So there are two kind of projects. Hi, high level, we can divide the IT projects into two buckets. One is called enhancement, and the other is called new project. Basically, enhancement is remodeling your house where the uh, the infrastructure is already there. You already have an existing home, and you are trying to do something else in the home, adding a portion or updating a portion of your house and so on and so forth. That's called enhancement projects in IT world. The other is new projects where, where you are building a brand new solution. You are building a brand new home. Both projects are very, uh, I mean, the workload and, and the, uh, the responsibility of BA changes significantly between the two. Number one, I prefer enhancement for BA because you already have existing solution, existing product and you are adding on to it. So you have a footprint already in existence and you know the application that is already working, you, you can get yourself familiar what, and so as a BA you do a as is to be study. We'll discuss in detail what as is and to be. So you already have a as is mod model in front of you. So it's easier for you to un grab the business process out of that, understand what exactly he wants to change in, in the current situation, right? A, a new product, a new solution. Now you have to do a lot of imagination. You have to do a lot of uh, wording. It's all talk, right? You, ha you do not have anything to compare with in a new product. The, idea is in somebody's head and you are trying to get that idea out of his head and understand it exactly what he is trying or she is trying to build so that is bit slightly bit challenging for a new ba so enhancement is a bit easier because you have already a com something in, in front of your face got my point so enhancement projects versus new projects so I, I, yeah, uh, what's the difference in business system analyst and business analyst? Okay, so the line is very blurry. It depends organization to organization. These specific roles means different thing in one company and means something else. So in different company, uh, every company has their own terminologies. A business system analyst is a little bit more on the technical side because he is a mixture of business and they expect him to know like data migration projects and so on and so forth. They, know, they want business system analysts to know SQL queries, how to write SQL queries, how to do data mining and so on and so forth. It's slightly more technical than business analyst role. System analyst is a lot more technical. Business analyst is mainly require, gather the requirement, document them, produce them and move on with that. There's a system analyst is a little bit more, but every organization has a different uh, terminology, a uh, different uh, title for their job. Like in my current uh, employment, they have business analysts, they have business technology analysts, and they have business systems analysts. So I myself don't know what the difference between the business technology analyst definition versus, so these are usually companies use those titles for pay grades and so on and so forth. So don't get too confused about it. You will find <clears throat> one definition in one company and then you go on to the different company and they, they define these roles completely different. Okay? Yes, okay, got you. Like analyst programmer is one thing. Many companies call it developer. Some call something else. So some call just the programmer. So there are multiple terminology uh, titles for the same role in different companies. So IIBA is basically uh, the institute, like the project management, the PMO is the institute, project management office. IIBA stands for International Institute of Business Administration, and this is their definition of business analysis. The, the set of tasks and technique used to 
work as a liaison among stakeholders to understand the structure, policies, and operation of an organization and to recommend solutions that enable the organization to achieve its goal. That's the definition of Institute or International Institute of Business Analysis. So your job is to basically liaison, I'm sorry, liaison among stakeholders, understand the structure, policies, and operations of that organization, and recommend solutions that enable organization to achieve their goal, what exactly they are trying to get out of this particular requirement, right? It's in the, in the first few days of this class, there will be a lot of theory because I want you to get familiar with all those terminologies, get familiar with all those roles that you will be dealing with and so on and so forth. Once we get basic understanding uh, established, then we'll start into the, the methodology, the artifacts, the, the process and so on and so forth. Slightly technical stuff. We'll work on a couple of uh, tools. This role is not tool specific. You have, but as a good BA, you will be working on uh, MS Visio. We'll provide you, we'll give you a free version that is good for 60 days to, to practice, to do your assignment and practice a little bit more when you try to put together business process diagrams and so on and so forth. Uh, you can do the same in other tools, but Visio is, is the industry standard. Uh, we'll uh, show you how the Agile tools are, Rally, Jira, and so on and so forth. So few of the tools we'll touch upon, but you are not, as a BA, you are not a tool specific. Okay? So a business analyst works as a liaison. You, you heard this word three, already 10 times, a liaison, a liaison, a bridge, basically, among stakeholders and in order to elicit, analyze, communicate, validate requirements for changes to pro business processes, policies, and information systems. Any question here? So your job is to be a liaison between stakeholders to elicit the requirements, analyze them, communicate them, validate them, and understand the business processes to provide the solution for either the policy change or information so information systems change. We good here? Yes. Just a contextual diagram to define what the parties are, what are the stakeholders involved and how you handle. So basically, a owner or sponsor who is representing the business, they contact project managers, project managers, find the solution developers and then the subject matter experts. So basically for the collection department, the MD or VP for that collection department will be the main sponsor and stakeholder. He will be paying the cost for developing that solution for his department. He will assign a subject matter expert. We call them SME or super user or subject matter expert. He is the person who understands the process completely in and out. These are the, it's a solution developers. It includes developers, QAs, and so on and so forth. And this is project manager, right? Now in the middle is you. And if you look closely, you are the only person who's connected to all other parties. You are connected to back and forth with project managers, you are connected back and forth with solution developers, you are connected between subject matter experts, you are connected between owners of the project, right? That's what I exactly said here. You are involved in each part of the PM assignment here. So you're involved in planning, you're involved in the, when the construction is going on, when the testing is going on, when that implementation is going on. Because you are talking to developers, talking to technical people, you are talking to PM, you are talking to subject matter experts, you are talking to business directly. So, which means that you are the bond between the, all the team, mem all the different teams. You are the liaison. That's where you stand. So that's why I was I was saying in the beginning, 
70 percent of your job if not more is communication making the communication clear making the communication straightforward understanding what exactly each person is trying to tell you and then translate it 100 percent accurate to the next person if you do not understand and pass on the wrong information to the development team or whatever the other party or the other end you will mess up the whole project that's why this is single point of success or single point of failure because all the connection goes through this point which is going to be you does this diagram help now you have something visual in front of you right can we move forward no yes. questions okay good so basically why we why this is so difficult to get the requirements right why do we have to go through such so much pain to get exactly what we want so basically every person your perception is different if you are in a different role if you are uh, this is a this is a cartoon with, which which depicts very clearly what exactly is the problem here each person see this require their their role differently uh, uh, see the requirement differently what i mean by that is i think i can anybody read this i can't really read this it's so tiny so basically uh, uh, okay, let me put it here. That's how customer explain the, the solution when they and it's not a joke. It, in reality, you will go through this all. The customer wants all the fancy bells and whistles and whatnot in that in their product. How the project leader understand it? How the analyst designed it? how the programmer wrote it how the business consultant dis describes it so how the project was documented and that's where the brd comes into play the document the artifact that you will produce right what uh, i don't i can't read it so tiny how the customer was build how it was supported and what customer really needed so he described it something way more fancier than what exactly he needed he just wanted a swing and every person who is involved had a different understanding of what the customer is asking for or what they are trying to sell in the end it's a simple so, so you have your job is to get this picture as, as early cleared up as early as possible and keep this picture in the head in the minds of all the participants at all time that we are just building our swing this is exactly what he wants this is exactly what we are going to give him not nothing more nothing less right that exactly is your role keep the vision clear going back to describe and define right keep the vision clear at every stage of the project and in the eyes of all the participants at all times in a nutshell this is what your challenges any comments everyone clear yes yes, yes. okay good so requirement communication communicate requirements back to the stakeholders review monthly small not small knowledge area so basically these are the three issues or three ways of doing it you keep the communication communicate the requirements back to the stakeholders as much as possible keep it 
keep it keep it going review mostly as often as possible once you so there are multiple ways of gathering requirements one of the most basic is interview so you set up a meeting you call that sme the subject matter expert who is representing the business and you sit with that person understand the process what exactly is the process and what he is trying to do when you leave the meeting you go to go back to your desk you type an email as per our meeting blah, this is my understanding blah 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 please validate so that we can move forward and send it back to them business will review it and will say no 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 this is not what i meant when i said this i meant this or he will say oh, exactly this is what i want you, then keep that knowledge sharing between the the parties involved so you doc then once you got, got his approval that exactly what he is trying to say put it together in your business requirement document you don't collect all the work in one one sitting so in first few meetings you will collect few 10 20 30 40 percent of the work document it send it back for validation then another two weeks down the road another meeting cover another area of the requirement and dig deep into that clarify document send it back for approval store it and so on and so forth once you cover we uncover all the requirements and all the requirements are documented in the brd then you have a final sign off from your business you send those that document to business when i say business it i mean this person and he will review and approve it then the document become official then the requirement become official now you can hand it over to the developer development team to start working on that got it okay once you hand it over to development the development starts the next phase is evaluate and select a solution assist with developers test testing and qa assist with implementation post implementation review i said you will be involved in all these stages right you work with qa so developers you work with qa and then the final deployment that is exactly what your role is i haven't touched anything in technical side no documentation no tools no nothing in, in the demo i just wanted to tell you guys explain you guys what what you are signing up for uh the next stage is the next class will have the first class that's where we'll discuss the outline i'll go back and i will retweak my outline as per the, the the participation i have for this class so that we'll put something in the front put, move something around add few things and then we'll discuss the time, the whole course outline and we'll take one chapter at a time and move forward with the with the course work any question at this point of time any clarification any comment any feedback for me so the recording of this all session okay, will be available champs. basically i understand listening is the main thing you saying right so you listen everything whatever you in time you get a project and a, uh they will say they do like this way to do this way to somebody then change comes up and they say do it this way so end of the things like a work through whatever but listening is the main things in here right exactly so as i said the main thing is your communication and then uh, if you go back to here this is a short list of things are expected these qualities expected from a ba these are the main functions you will be performing correct and one of them is the skilled listener right and correct a few few more that that may 
be there for each each situation is different right, right? each business is different each company is different they have their own uh, culture they have their own way of doing things so things will be could be maybe all are not applicable maybe few more are added to this list and so on and so forth. so yes you are you are you are right this is the main expectation any other question so we are all clear what we are signing up for it's a non technical role but you have to work on your communications very hard there are some technical things we'll cover those technical things in in later class i think the classes will run for 7 to 8 weeks two classes per per uh, per week we have uh, if we have to uh, uh, a holiday or something on on a long long weekend or something we can reschedule that class uh, all the recordings of each class will be available you will have access to the recording ahmed will will provide you the access to the those recording so that you can go back and listen to that those those classes if you miss something if you have any questions you can always bring those questions back into the next class i will try to answer a few questions in the beginning of the class from the previous lesson and then at the end of the class you can ask the question from the current the let the lesson the chapter we covered and i will really appreciate your feedback if you think i i have miss something or something is not clear or you want to know a little bit more detail about one area or another let me know email me tell ahmed uh, whatever is is your feedback so that i can tweak my my next class according to your expectations any more questions any more feedback if nothing we can conclude the class today guys do you have any question for trainers uh actually i have one question <coughs> sure go ahead madhuri yeah uh, can you please provide us i mean the list of uh, technical terms used in the mostly i mean that could yes. be very easy for us i think so. yes i will provide you once i will define those things to you there are mm-hmm. some uh, some material that i will provide you i'll give you sample brds i will give you sample process diagram i will give you a lot of uh, artifacts to work with i know it's not possible to memorize all the definitions you don't have to memorize all those definition but you have to have those things handy okay. and i i i've been providing once we cover in the class then i'll provide those those uh, documents to you guys as well so there will be some material coming out of each class okay any other comment any other this is mushtaq will you be providing the slides uh, or any handouts how, how how can we take that so the recordings will be provided to you and i will give you some the material in slides are basically i talk a lot on the slides there was a small small bullet points for me to know which topic i am covering so these slides i will not provide you these slides but i will provide you the detailed version of those things that are included in those slides uh, will it be by email or how yes it will be by email ahmed will join you all into our yahoo group for this particular uh, uh, course in this particular class uh, this particular session and mm-hmm. after every class if there is some something for to share he will give you those documents in a email format and then uh, you have the recordings available as well so you can go through those those uh, uh, documents that i provide and you can is- still listen the the how we covered those things in the past. and if we miss any class uh, we can still go and uh, re- hear and uh, see the recordings yes exactly exactly i will highly appreciate if you try not to miss any class because uh there are a lot of discussion going forward when you guys will get more f- comfortable with the with the contents and all that you will be asking a lot more questions so if you miss that class then you miss your opportunity to ask the questions you can hear what others have asked but then you miss your own own uh, chance you lose your own chance to right uh, to ask that question right 
Okay. Any other question? Thank you all. We Thank will you for joining. Start, we will uh, we will start. Uh, someone is asking about what time we will have next class. We will start our next class. The class timings are standard, like you know, 8 p.m. Central Time. And guys who are located in California, it will start at 6 p.m. California time. And I encourage everyone to start few minutes earlier, uh, be available five minutes before the class start time. If the trainer gets delayed, we can wait for him, but uh, waiting for the students will, will, will delay the class timing. So I always encourage all the students to start five, ten minutes before uh, login, and you, you should be ready by the time trainer starts the class. And those of yeah. uh, you who have not registered yet, uh, let me know. You have my number and email. Uh, please uh, enroll yourself and register to the class so that uh, before before by friday so that we we know we knew how many people are uh, enrolling in this class and according to their background uh, the trainer will plan the course so i have i have a few people who already registered and those of you who has not please uh, get back to me text me or uh, let me know your if you are joining or not joining that is fine uh, but but just let me know and and uh, most of the time like you know as uh, we said earlier we will have classes on sunday and wednesday 8 pm cst 6 pm pst and 9 9 pm uh, esd sometimes if it is a holiday of a long weekend if something you know some emergency or something by that time if we cancel the class then we will continue the class from where we left in, in previous class any other question? Okay, guys. Any other question? We try. I try to.